Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com and this is the brand new iPhone 10s which has new cameras as well as a new feature in portrait mode that allows you to change the depth of field. Now the Apple presentation spent a lot of time showing off this new depth of field changing that you can go from 1.4 to f16. So I took this phone out yesterday and took a bunch of portrait mode photos to show you how the results turned out. Are they good? Are they bad? We're going to see in just a second. But before I go too far, since we're talking about the iPhone, have you downloaded my app called My Gear Vault? It's the best way to input, organize, and protect your gear. And it's absolutely free for iOS as well as Android. So go download it now and get all of your gear entered into it and protected. So I went out yesterday and I wanted to test out the camera, the new camera, as well as the portrait mode. So I went to a bar, I shot ice cream, I shot a dog, I shot portraits, and I wanna show you how cool this feature is. But I also wanna to explain to you why the feature isn't going to replace real photographers, or sorry, real cameras anytime soon, because any camera in any photographer's hand that knows what they're doing can get good results. So let's start off with this image right here. This is probably something pretty tough for a algorithm to figure out how to make work. Because as we zoom in on the portrait mode photo, you can see that it misses most of the glass. It's just blurring that out. Now this isn't the best one to, sh well actually I could show you the depth of field. So you go up here, you hit edit, and then check it out. That's F16, look at the guy in the background. Watch this, and then we go all the way down to 1.4, and the guy disappears. But also, the glass disappears. You can see how the computer's algorithm can't really keep up with it. Now, for the most part, let me explain this. Most people would never know the difference between good bokeh and bad bokeh on the phone because they just think this is a cool feature. They won't see the imperfections, most likely because they're not printing and not really analyzing the image as much as we are as photographers. But when Apple stands up there and says, hey, this is going to be on par with the professional cameras out there, professional looking photos, no, it's, it's, it's really not. Um, let's zoom in on this one right here. You can see the top edge, you can see an issue with the bokeh right there. Uh, but other than that, it does look pretty cool. The fact that you can do this on your phone is pretty amazing. Now, algorithmic photography is going to continue to evolve and change, and I do think it will find its way into bigger professional cameras one day and work hand in hand. But check it out, look at the background. They're in focus, now they're not in focus. But you saw the imperfections that were there. Again, it's a cool feature that you could do this. I think it's gonna get overdone by some people, but again, in the right hands, it could look pretty good. Moving on, this was just to show you a guy in the, in the, in the background so let me just show you how we can blur him out. So if you get a distraction in the background, we, it starts at four or five, we can just go boom, and there he's pretty much out of focus. But look at the deep, deep background back here. Pretty amazing that that's out of focus as well. That's gonna happen with your depth of field and you're using the portrait mode, uh, but you can change it like that and boom. All right, moving on, portrait, an actual portrait. Look how sharp this is on the eye. You can see me in the reflection right there. This is very nice. It's a nice portrait. If you get your angles right, if you get your lighting right, I'm just using a lot of light coming in off the street, which is looking really good. Now you can see some of the depth of field issues that happen in the face right there, in the side of the head, but this is a really cool portrait. And let's see, we can go to 1.4 and totally obliterate the background right there. You can also change the different portrait modes like uh, studio light, which I actually don't like for that. And then I generally take this into Lightroom Mobile and make changes. So that one looks pretty good, but it's the next one where we run into issues. See what it's doing right here with the glasses? That is not good, that's not usable, that's not professional. My DSLR or mirrorless cameras aren't gonna do that or run into that issue. And again, we're talking about a phone here which does a good job. And you know what's interesting, which a lot of people don't point out, is the fact that the phone at 11, 12, $1,300, yeah, is more expensive than some DSLRs so or, or mirrorless cameras. Keep that in mind as well. This one, check out the imperfections in the background. Now this is not, I'm sure, an easy background for a phone to figure out what to do with because of these bars, but yeah, that's showing you how bad the algorithm did in this case in portrait mode that it's like spotty blur in the background. Never gonna happen with your DSLR. Same thing, we zoom in here, 
this is a cool photo, but look what happens. It misses some of the reflections. So what Apple does when they show you their presentations, it shows you the perfect photo from the perfect distance every single time, of course, because it's marketing. So they make sure they don't have glass in it or reflections because it's going to have issues. Um, but this one is cool because you can play with the depth of field whether you want more or less. Do we want less just so that we know it's the barman in the background? Do we want more? No, because then it looks like just a terrible snapshot. In this case, you can just change it and save it and boom, you've got that picture. Now, this is where you can't compete with a DSLR. Now, I like this portrait. I like this photo that I did of my friends just waiting in line for some barbecue at Fed at Sal, and it's nice. Look how sharp that is with portrait mode. And it does do a nice job on the background. And sure, there's not a lot of depth of field in this one, and I went to 1.4. Look over here in the background as this changes to F16. So sure, this looks much better with the depth of field down at 1.4, but the difference is, if this was really taken at 1.4, Ben's shoulder right here would be out of focus, and Lauren's eyes would be in focus, like tight focus, as long as you nailed your focus. But see, that's one thing that the algorithm can't figure out, is how to get the foreground depth of field to match the background depth of field, so it's not quite there just yet. But this is a good portrait that I would take into Lightroom Mobile and go ahead and boomify it in black and white. Now moving on to the next one, we've got the dog named Parker. Now one thing I'm going to do is try to do a 1.4 iPhone test versus the same focal length in a professional camera and see how the results turn out. That's gonna be a fun little video to go ahead and do. But what I like about this mode down here that they didn't say blur more or blur less is the fact that people, and, and it's not exactly representative of, of apertures because we, we know it's not perfect, but what I do like is like F16. People are gonna be like, oh, at F16, the background's gonna be more in focus. At F1.4, the background's gonna be less in focus. They may not understand what bokeh is, but how cool is it that we're teaching people through this app photography? I think that this is a great training ground to get people interested in photography so that they can be like, oh, you know, this is really cool. I'd like to do this professional, not professionally, oh boy. I'd not like to do this professionally, but would like to try my hand with a bigger camera and lenses. Because one of the issues that you run into with the iPhone, and I saw this yesterday with portrait mode, is you must be within eight feet. If you're further away than eight feet, no portrait mode is going to happen, and you're not gonna get the depth of field effect. Where, and if you get too close, you can't get the depth of field effect. And on top of that, you could do that with a real quote unquote camera. You can change your lenses. You have bigger sensors, which means you're gonna be able to get real depth of field easier and better, and also better low light images. I'm gonna show you low, low light in an image, but this is one, if you get an image with a distraction in the background like this building, you can just go ahead and change that to 1.4. You would, you would save it, but check it out. It does a pretty good job cutting around the head. There's an issue right there that we see um, around the, the, the back. You can see bad bokeh, it's a little hazy. But for the most part, most people would never know the difference and know that this is an issue or not. So for most everyday people, this is gonna be perfectly fine. But when you say it competes with a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, it just doesn't. So this is inside in low light situation, straight out of camera. F16, of course, you can see that this is pretty cool, this Lytro stuff, even though it's not like Lytro. It's just amazing that you can do this with portrait mode in the phone and get that fake bokeh going. This is F16 and this is 1.4. Now this one, it did a fairly good job in the image. You got the hand on there. It does a good job cutting out the ice cream cone because the guy is a pretty good distance. I had him hold it out from me. And this is where I was running into that issue where I wasn't close enough because I wanted to back up and get a different type of image, compose it differently, but I couldn't because I needed to stay within the bokeh range. This I just did because we're outside. Wanted to see how the low light did, just using light coming in from through a window while we're outside. And I think it looks pretty good. Uh, again, Portrait mode did a really nice job separating the subject from the background. Now moving on to the next one, this is interesting because of the focus shifted over to her. Now we know that the reflections aren't working out too well, but let's zoom in. This is F16, cool. You got, oh look, there's a guy outside looking into the window. As we go to 1.4, look what it's doing. It's finding part of her face and blurring out the other parts of the face. So portrait mode right here, 
isn't that good when it comes to reflections. That's what we've seen while going through these photos. We've seen that you can get some nice images when you know what you're doing, and that's the key part, but as you keep going through the rest of the images, you can see imperfections in the background right here, imperfections in the glasses right here, but in other cases, you get some nice results that are for the most part great. But you can see the limitations of this. Will it get there one day? I think yes, these modes will continue to get better and better, but the, the, the downfall of the phones, small sensors, small lenses, harder to get real depth of field, but it's a proving ground for many people who may find an interest in photography. Now, when you're comparing images with professional cameras or DSLRs and mirrorless cameras to what you see on here, you're looking at it on a phone. You're not making prints, so you won't really see how good the camera, because people are like, oh my God, that photo is amazing. And then you start zooming in on it and you go, well, no, it's, it's, it's really not amazing. But it will get there one day, and it's a nice offering to have in the phone, but for most people, let me just say this. This is the X, the 10S. If you have a 10, you really don't need to upgrade to this unless you want the latest and greatest in cameras because it has a slightly larger sensor, which should be better in low light situations. Now, before I sign off here, I wanna remind you to please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please go ahead and do so. Click subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss another video. And if you wanna get a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on my website. Put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. And don't forget, download my gear vault for your new phone because it's pretty awesome. Thank you very much for watching Jared Poland, Photo.com. See ya.